Hello, hello, hello. Thank you so much for listening to the hashtag create your earth life podcast with myself, your host, Janessa Staples. And today we are going to be talking about how to know you have been saved. So let's get started. And as I've said before, while I'm recording, the notes usually go away, so I have to bring them back up. All right, here we go. So, have you been saved? That's a great question. Some people don't know. And even I have been um, doubtful or questioning or like not confident in knowing if I've been saved. So this episode is going to let you know, it's going to give you information um, that I've gained from listening to pastors, from reading the Bible, from what Jesus says. Um, This is going to let you know, have you been saved? How do you know? How can you tell? All right. So I listened to a sermon preached by Robert Morris. He is one of my favorite pastors. If you don't know who he is, he's on YouTube and he's wonderful. I will link the specific sermon that I talk about in this episode down below in the bio so you can check it out. I highly suggest you looking him up. Um, he's kind of funny and every, every single, um, sermon that I listen to that he does. It really speaks to me. It speaks to my heart. And I think you guys would enjoy listening to him. So when you ask Jesus into your heart, you ask for forgiveness. You tell God that you are abandoning yourself for him. So uh, I come from the new age. Uh, I already came from the new age. I used to be in the new age. And the whole thing about the new age is like, you are doing everything for yourself. You're doing everything, you're in control, and the self is what you focus on, and that's what you want to grow and evolve and do all these things for yourself. Being a Christian, you're doing everything for God. Everything is for God, you lean on Him, you rely on Him, He provides for you. You tell Him that you're trusting Him, you're surrendering your life to Him. And God gives you the gift of the Holy Spirit inside of you and begins to do his work. Um, you may restart, may start to repent, read the word, which is reading the Bible, pray, but there may be things that are difficult to give up. So this is my story on what has been difficult to give up. So as you guys know, if you've listened to my testimony, um, I heard my cousin's testimony and she was born a Christian, raised a Christian, went to Christian schools, and then she had some hardship in her life. She had some trials, tribulations, and she was like, I'm not believing anymore. I don't believe. And she started doing witchcraft and then, um, and paganism, stuff like that. She was using, I think, tarot cards and she was trying to projectile out of her body or something like that, just doing all these things. And then um, God basically came to her and was like, don't you remember all that I've done to you? And then she was saved again, or say, I don't know, was it saved again? She was reborn. And um, then she stopped doing all those things and she started talking about how tarot cards and all these things are... um, are ways to like bring demons into your life and like they're condemned in the Bible and all these things. And when I watched her testimony, I was like, what? Like, I did not know all this. And then immediately I stopped using all those things. And so those were kind of easy for me because those are things I used every day and you would think that'd be kind of hard, but no, I was like, no, like I don't want the, I don't want demons in my house. I don't want my son to be exposed to these things. Like she talked about her kids were attacked by demons. Like, I don't want that. I don't want that for myself. I don't want that for my son. Nope. I stopped doing all that. Um, Reiki, tarot cards, yoga, runes, everything. Stopped it all. Haven't done any of it because I want to research um, why the Bible condemns it or if the Bible condemns it. And I'm going to be doing more episodes on that in the future. But um, so those things actually were easy to let go. But those are some of the things I let go. But my one thing, my one sin that I was like, I'm not letting this go. Like, I don't think Jesus cares. I don't think God cares, um, was premarital sex. So I had it in my head. I was like, God doesn't care what we do with our bodies like that. Like he, he knows like if I love someone, then it's okay. Like if I'm hooking up with people, I understand. But if I'm like in love with someone, like I love my boyfriend, like why can't I have sex with him? Like what's wrong with that? And 
so then, um, you know, it kept coming up like in the Bible, I would read about it not intentionally. It would just be something that I was reading and then it would just come up. Um, and then I was like starting to feel bad about it. And then I started praying about it and I was like, God, like, is it really bad? Like, is this true? Like, you really don't want me doing this. Um, please give me a sign. So then I would turn on the radio and listen to like the Christian channel and they'd be talking about it. How like, um, premarital sex you are sinning against yourself not just against god but against yourself as well and then i would turn on a podcast and it would not be titled anything about premarital sex but they would start talking about it um i would listen to a sermon like everything everything like every single day something was coming up and i was just like in denial i was like no no like this is not the answer i want to hear like, no, like God doesn't care. God knows that I'm in love and like, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. And then just one day he convicted me. And the next day I was like, I can't do this anymore. I'm not doing it anymore. Um, I can't have sex until I'm married. And there you go. So that is what happened to me. And I've heard other people go through similar situations, not with premarital sex, but with other things um, that were hard for them to let go. And that right there is the Holy Spirit working inside of you. He convicts you and he changes your heart and he helps you realize the truth and opens your eyes to what's going on in the world and all the deceit in the world and how we live in a fallen world. And we have been told that so many things are okay when they're not. We live in a world where you go on the TV, uh, you watch TV, you go online, whatever, and there is deceit everywhere and we're all, a lot of people are celebrating it. Um, but it's not the truth. It's not what God wants us to be doing. Not only are you doing the work of reading the Bible, praying, repenting after you've asked Jesus into your heart, um, but the Holy Spirit is doing work on you by convicting you and um, of doing your wrong, of doing wrong, of doing wrongful things. He's convicting you of doing wrongful things, of your sins, your, your sins that are just ones that you don't want to let go of. Um, and this is the process of sanctification. So now we are gonna read Matthew 15. Where did I put my Bible? Oh, here it is. All right, so let's go to Matthew 15. All right, so it is defilement comes from within. Then the scribes and Pharisees who were from Jerusalem came to Jesus saying, why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat bread. He answered and said to them, why do you also transgress the commandment of God because of your tradition? For God commanded saying, honor your father and your mother and he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, whoever says to his father or mother, Whatever profit you might have received from me is a gift to God. Then he need not honor his father or mother. Thus you have made the commandment of God of no effect by your tradition. Hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy about you saying, These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. You hear that? These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. When he had called the multitudes to himself, he said to them, hear and understand, not what goes into the mouth defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth, this defiles a man. So he's saying, what goes in your mouth does not defile you. So. Then his disciples came and said to him, do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying? But he answered and said, every plant which my heavenly father was not plant, has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind leads the blind, both will fall into a ditch. Then Peter answered and said to him, explain the parable to us. So Jesus said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not yet understand what whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and is eliminated? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart and they defile a man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulterer, 
mysteries, fornications, theft, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with, with unwashed hands does not defile a man. So what he's saying is the Pharisees are saying like, we have these rules as men, you need to wash your hands before you eat that bread. And God is saying, you think you're going to heaven because you do all these things, you have your man commandments. And then you also, you know, the Pharisees also read the Bible, they fasted, they prayed, um, but they followed laws of men. They didn't follow all the laws of the Bible. So because you read the Bible, doesn't mean you're gonna go to heaven. It doesn't mean that you're saved. It's when the Bible, you listen to the Bible, you understand the Bible and you follow the, the word you follow it. You listen to the Ten Commands and you follow it. So he's saying you can read the Bible all you want, but it's going to disappear in your stomach. You're eating, you're eating this bread. It's going to disappear. It's going to be gone. It's the work the Holy Spirit does inside of you. Your work of reading the Bible and understanding it and doing what it says. So the words that come out of your mouth is what defiles you. So you want your heart soft. So you want to be spreading love and forgiveness and you don't want to be lying or um, condemning people because they haven't followed a man's law, not Jesus' law. When you can think back and say, I used to be one way and now I am another. I think differently. I act differently. I want to be in the word. I want to be with God. When your behaviors, thoughts, words, and feelings inside you are closer to heaven than hell. I do not want to be doing what I was doing. That is when you know you have been reborn. So this is when you can pinpoint the 180 transformation. Then you can be confident in saying, I have been saved. So God says these people haven't been saved. The Pharisees have not been saved because their heart has not been softened and they still speak evil. They are doing all the work, but their heart has not been changing. And the Holy Spirit, I guess, I'm not sure, like, is the Holy Spirit in them? Like, you know, it doesn't sound like they've surrendered their lives to God. Um, just because they're doing the work doesn't mean you've surrendered your lives to God. Um, so, if you can, can you pinpoint a time in your life recently or a long time ago that your life has changed? So I can pinpoint it, um, you know, I listened to my cousin's testimony, I started reading the Bible, I started praying, I started repenting, and then the things I didn't want to give up, God convicted me, and I started giving up. And so it's not about if you're reading the Bible, you're doing the works, it's about what comes out. You know, goes into your stomach, disappears, but is your heart being softened? What comes out of your mouth? That's when you know you've been reborn, when you've changed your way of living, changed your way of thinking, changed your way of feeling, As I listened to Pastor Morris who explained this, I could relate with the confusion some people have about being saved. The church will ask you, have you been saved? And some people will think, well, I mean, I believe in Jesus. Uh, I don't have a specific date, but sure, yeah, I've been saved. Or, oh yeah, I signed a card at the church, so yeah, I've been saved. And at the end of church, they say, if you haven't been saved, close your eyes and do this prayer with me. And then they usually ask you to ask Jesus into your heart, surrender your life to God, um, abandon the self, abandon yourself, all your fleshly desires. And you may catch yourself doing this prayer, even though you've already been saved, you're not confident in being saved. You're like, well, maybe just in case, maybe just in case I haven't been saved, I will do this prayer every time after church or whenever um, it's presented to you. I have done this. I have been doing this. The last time I did this was actually at the end of February. February 23rd was the last time I had Bible study at my church. And there was a prayer that they did and they said, if you haven't been saved, and I was like, well, like, just in case, you know, just in case God doesn't know, which obviously God knows everything. Or maybe I don't know, you know, whatever. So I close my eyes and I do it and everything. Um, but there's really no need to continuously do it. If you've already been saved, you don't need to keep doing it. There's no just in case. You've either been saved or you haven't been saved. And to know if you've been saved is that 180 time in your life, that pin, pinpoint that time in your life where your life changed to 180. Your thoughts changed, your feelings changed, your behaviors changed, your heart has changed. 
You know, you are loving and forgiving. You're not trying to get revenge on people. You are not lying. You are trying to not sin. You're sinning less. You're not sinning at all. You have changed your life or you have let God change your life. But Pastor Morris helped make it easy to pinpoint. Have you been reborn? Did you ask Jesus into your heart? Have you surrendered your life to Jesus? Have you let go of all control and put all trust in Jesus? And have you began to see your life change? Do you see the Holy Spirit working in your life? So take a minute and pinpoint when you have been saved. If you have not been saved and want to be saved, pause this podcast. But first, listen. Before you pause the podcast, close your eyes and ask Jesus into your heart and surrender your life. And I honestly can't tell you how amazing he has made my life. Um, I could share lots of testimonies with you, but I'm going to save that for another time. This is your time. If you haven't been saved by Jesus, close your eyes right now and ask him into your heart. All right. With that being said, I am currently reading the gospel. I have read a lot of it because of the Bible study we did in January and February. So if you have not taken time to get to know Jesus, you can just go through my last, I don't know, there's like 30 episodes of getting to know Jesus and we're doing a Bible study. So if you want to get to know Jesus, if you want to get to know his heart, I suggest you go back through and read, uh, not read through, well, you can read through, but listen to those Bible studies and read with me through them. But I am reading the gospel again, or rereading those parts and rereading, and then reading the new parts uh, that I haven't read yet. And I was reading Matthew 13, 1 through 8, and 13, 18 through 33. I am going to read this to you in a minute, but just let me explain something to you first. So a concoction of things happened inside of me, like there was a bunch of things part of an equation and something happened. So I had the sermon I had heard earlier with um, Pastor Morris. He's amazing. And then I listened to a podcast a few days ago. It's called um, Marriage After God. So if you are married or planning on getting married to you should definitely listen to it. It's really good. But the wife was talking about like, if you don't eat every day, you're going to starve. And it's the same thing with the Holy Spirit, with the Bible. If you do not read the Bible every day, your spirit um, is going to be star starved. And then, of course, I'm reading the Bible. So the Holy Spirit's doing his work on me. And... I've been reborn when I was saved it was over the summer summer 2020 so it's only been like six or seven months and when I have shared my testimony with people um, they've said like wow you have a spark um, you're very passionate you should run with it so that's like a good thing to hear like you you should continue to share your testimony you should continue to get in the word you should continue to get closer to God is what I'm hearing but it's also a little scary because I don't know about you guys, but when I start something like going to school, it was in high school and in college, both, I would be like, I'm going to do so good this semester. And I would get all my files ready. I'd organize them. I would look at my agenda. I would plan what I'm going to study. I would try to get ahead on homework. And then like a few weeks in, I would just be like, "Ugh, I'm over this. Like I would start to get distracted. Um, I would start meeting new friends. I would start, you know, skipping class or, um, I would just not want to do it and when I was in college um, I would I would smoke marijuana so I would smoke a lot of marijuana like too much I'd be like oh just smoke a little and I'd smoke a bunch I would take naps like I just stopped caring um, about the schoolwork I still did good and I still got good grades but it was like I was getting behind and I would have to sh I would stress out and try to catch up and everything like that so that is my ML that's what I do that's what I've been doing ever since I was in high school. Um, so I'm going to read that passage that I was talking about. It is Matthew 13, one through eight, and 13, 18 through 33.
On the same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea, and great multitudes were gathered together to him, so that he got into a boat and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow, and he sowed. sowed. Some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell in the stony places, where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because that they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. And he who has ears to hear, let him hear." And then 13, 18 through 33, the parable of the sower explained. So he's going to explain this parable that I just read to you. Therefore, here are the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who received seed by the wayside, but he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who hears this word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only a while. For when tribulations or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. But he who receives seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. So you do hear that? But he who received the seed on stony places, that is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet he has no roots in himself but endures only for a while. That is like me in school. You know, I'm joyful, I'm excited about it. And then I'm just like, I have no roots. I don't want to do it anymore. I'm done. Um, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be like that when it comes to being a Christian and believing in God because God is so faithful. He is so forgiving and he loves us all so much. And he has blessed me so much. Like every single day, he blesses me more and more and more. So I don't want to be a seed on stony ground on stony places. I don't want to um, go through trials and tribulations and just not believe anymore and not be faithful um, to God because I know he's going to help us through everything that we're going through. And I don't want to be planted, I don't want to be a seed planted in thorny areas because those areas are where the enemy attacks and the enemy will be like, oh, look at all this money. Look at this nice house. Look at these cars. Um, look at all the success I can give you. Like I can give you the world. I don't want to be distracted by the enemy. I want to have strong roots. I want to be planted in good ground and I want to have strong roots. So when trials and tribulations, when the storm comes, I want to be strong. I don't want to be ripped out of the ground. I want to be holding myself strong and I want to be strong in the word. When people question me and ask me questions, I want to be able to answer them. And I don't ever want to get distracted and be attacked by the enemy so strongly that I stop believing or I don't have faith any longer. And this is what Jesus is saying. Um, where are your seeds planted? You know, you need to do that work. You need to look and read it. But also remember, like, it's not in our control. Not everything is our control. We could do our work and everything, but we have to want this. And also God is in control um, and the Holy Spirit is inside of us and he's doing work on us too. So if things don't happen right away, remember sanctification, that it takes, oh, takes time for things to start changing and to get moving. And sometimes you have to wait for God to um, do what he wants to do. Sometimes he wants us to be patient. I also want to discuss what he talks about here. He says, But he who receives seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. So if you don't know what fruit represents in the Bible, um, if you bear fruit, there's good fruit, which is like your good qualities, your qualities that line up with God's word. So you have a loving heart, you're caring, um, you are forgiving, but your bad fruit is like if you're revengeful and you don't forgive others and you lie. So those are bad fruits. You want to get rid of those. You want to 
cut those fruits off, you want to throw them in the fire. But your good fruits you want to grow and you want to produce more and you want to be loving and kind and forgiving and you want to listen to God's word and you want to love your neighbor and you want to follow the Ten Commandments. So this is growing your fruit. So that's another thing. When you are planted in good ground, you're able to grow good fruit. So if you come from the new age, like I do, then this is a kind of situation where you'd say like, I wanna evolve, I wanna be better, I wanna be my best self. Where in this situation, we are surrendering to God. We are bearing and producing fruits that God wants us to produce. It's not about what we love, it's about what God loves. And sometimes that's hard. It even says in the Bible, we are gonna do things that we don't wanna do, but it's what God wants us to do. And he blesses us. His, he gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit. He gives us eternal life. He gave us life in general. He is going to bless us and that is, and does bless us and has already blessed us. Um, so that is the beautiful gift that God gives us. So if you are a new believer or a newborn Christian or a long-term Christian living in a lukewarm life, rely on God, abandon yourself, Pinpoint when you are saved, recognize salvation is a lifelong journey where God will be continuously doing work in you for the rest of your life. We will never be as good as Jesus, but God wants our hearts to get as close to Jesus' heart's heart as we can. And let's end today with a prayer. All right, guys. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for your word. Thank you for this platform so we can connect, so we can learn together, so we can share your word, so we can understand your word, so we can grow closer to you and build a better relationship with you. Thank you for all the blessings that you have given us from the start of being born to Jesus um, giving his life for us, for our sins. Thank you for forgiving us for our sins. Thank you for saving us and helping us be reborn in your word and softening our hearts and changing our hearts and helping us love others and forgive others and understand that you have forgiven us for so much that there's no reason why we should not forgive others. I ask today, I pray today that you will bless the people listening and you will give them guidance and give them the words that you want them to know and want them to share. Thank you, Lord, so much for all that you do. Amen. All right, guys. God bless you all. I hope you guys have the best day ever.